In one of my last videos I showed you a way how you can implement a 4 position switch with one of the trim switches here on the MT12. This virtual 4 position switch could be used, for example, to switch through the different modes on a 4 wheel steering setup. And wouldn't it be cool if you get some sort of uh, acoustic feedback, some sort of announcement, which tells you in which mode you're in when you're switching through the modes. This is of course possible with the HTX operating system here on the MT12. And in this video I will show you how it works. For the announcements we need some audio files and unfortunately I can't create the audio files for you, but I will definitely tell you and show you how you have to prepare the audio files in order to use them on the MT12 as announcements. And now let's get started. See you on the PC where we will start with preparing the audio files. So here we are at the PC. As you can see, I have already opened some windows. On the upper left corner, I have a text editor. In this case, it's the Notepad++, but every text editor will do. We don't need something special here. In the lower left corner, I have a Windows PowerShell console application. And on the right, I have a browser window with all the relevant files for this video. Those are the generated audio files. They are already WAV files, but they are in the wrong format. Those are stereo files with a sample rate of 44.1 kHz. And we need mono files with a sample rate of 16 or 32 kHz. And by the way, if your source files are MP3 files, then the whole process works exactly the same. FFmpeg is able to read and convert MP3 files as well as WAV files. I put the link in the video description where you can download the FFmpeg package and it is available for Linux, Mac and Windows. So let's take a look at this batch file here with the four commands. The four commands are exactly the same except for the file name. And what we will do with every command here, um, we call the FFmpeg executable and give some parameters to it. The first parameter, hide banner, has no functional uh, relevance. It is just um, there to reduce the, the log of FFmpeg so it gets a bit better readable. Then the minus, one, minus i parameter is the input parameter. This is our input file, um, the file which we are going to convert. This is our source file. Then the a codec, the audio codec. PCM S16LE, this is the proper codec for a WAV file, minus AC1. This um, parameter defines or is responsible for that we get a mono file. Then minus AR32000 is the sample rate, in this case 32 kilohertz. As I said, you can uh, use 16 kilohertz. This will work as well. And the final parameter is the name of the generated file, the output file. And this um, here you have to consider or to make sure that you don't use any file name that, which is longer than 10, um, 10 digits, 10 signs. Because um, the HTX operating system can only process files with a max length of 10 um, signs. So here we have six letters, the point and the WAV file name ending or file ending. So in total, these are exactly 10 letters, 10 uh, digits, 10 signs. Um, it is possible that it is shorter than 10, but not longer. So make sure you use a proper file name for the output file. Okay, and if we execute this batch file, I type CO and tap. This gives me auto completion here in the PowerShell. And now I hit enter. And that's it. The four new files are generated and converted. And here we have the log file of FFmpeg. We can see what it has done to the file. It reads the file and says this is a stereo file. This is right. The codec of the, codec of the um, source file is PCM S16LE. This was already the right codec. It was in 44.1 kilohertz sample rate. This was not the right sample rate. And it was a stereo file, and we need a mono file. This is correct. It, it was a stereo file, or the, the source file is a, a stereo file, and the bit 
weil der Resolution, der Bit Resolution ist 16 Bit. And it generated an audio stream with this codec here, PCM S16 LE, with 32 kHz sample rate, created a mono file, and again with 16 bit resolution. Okay, so we now should have proper files to use them with the HTX operating system on the MT12. I now copy them with the Control C and go here to the content of my SD card. This is the content of the SD card of the MT12. I connected the MT12 via USB to the computer and here we have the SD card content. There you should have a folder sound. In this folder sound there are some subfolders, uh, language specific subfolders and here you have to make sure that you put your audio files in the right folder in the system menu on the MT12, in the radio setup, there is a, an option with, with which you can define in what language the MT12 is running. Per default it is English and my MT12 is running in English, but if you have set your MT12 to run in German, for example, then you have to put your audio files in the DE folder. If you have your MT12 running in English, then put it into the EN folder. If you are in doubt, put it in every folder, then you're on the safe side. So I put mine in the EN folder because my MT12 is running in English. Control V to paste them. And here they are. Those are the four new files. And now let's get back to the MT12 and try them out. Welcome back at the MT12. First, let us go to the system menu, to the radio setup. Here you will find a, a menu entry called voice language, where it is, voice language, voice language, here it is, voice language, and as you can see, it is set to English here on my MT12. This means that the audio files which are stored in the folder EN are relevant in this setup. If you set it for uh, to German, for example, then the audio files in the folder DE are relevant for the setup. I let mine on English, that's fine for me. And one quick tip, if you don't hear any announcements, make sure the mode here is set to a different mode than quiet. If you have set it to quiet, then you won't hear any announcements. I set mine to alarm, that's fine for me. Now let's go to model. Quick reminder, we have created this Four position switch here with this logical switches, LO5, LO6, LO7 and LO8. Those are the four states, the four positions of our four position switch. And these logical switches we will use to trigger the sounds. Go to the special functions, short press on the roller, or long press on the roller, logical switch, select logical uh, switch LO5. This is the first state, the first position then we need the function that is executed if this logical switch gets active. We need play track, not play sound. Play sound plays, well, some system sounds. Play track lets you choose one of your custom sounds. And I select four wheel steering for LO5. The last parameter would be a repeat parameter um, so that the, the audio file is repeated. But we don't need that, so I let it as it is. Then next short press, long press, logical switch LO6, play track, it's always the same now, and here I select front. Short press, long press, logical switch LO7, 7, play track, then here I will choose rear wheel steering, and the logical switch LO8, play track, we need play track here, play track, and here I want to use crap mode. So those are the four sound files associated with the logical switch. Now Let's go to the uh, monitor page here and test it out. With the T3 button 
um, I cycle through the different states. Front wheel steering active. Rear wheel steering active. Crab mode active. Rear wheel steering active. Front wheel steering active. Four wheel steering active. Okay, and that's it. Cool, huh? Thanks for watching. Thanks for staying with me until the end here. If you like this video, please hit the like and the subscribe buttons. This would be of great help for the channel. Until next time, goodbye, servus.